Alright, hi all, and welcome to Tower of Ruin, and this is Nova. This computer is one of many in my collection of computers. This one pretty much represents what ultimately became my first computer. And this one's gone through many, many changes since we acquired it in 1999. The only original part is the main chassis, which I painted back in 2007 and it's been well loved ever since. The original incarnation of this thing had a slot one Pentium 3. Currently this thing has a socket 370 Pentium 3 866 CPU with 256 megabytes of SD RAM. The motherboard in this is an Asus CUV4X hyphen C which contains a VIA chipset. Not really big on it, but that's about all I can get it's in these days. Originally this thing, when purchased back in the day, had a socket, a Super Socket 7 motherboard made by MicroStar. And then l later, a Slot 1 based motherboard known as the BX Master from MicroStar. Unfortunately, both motherboards have since failed, and it's gone through several ever since. But today, we're going to be focusing on this guy's rebuild. All right, please excuse the cable management. Never was a priority when this thing first came out. Here is the cooler that it, for the Socket 370. This one's a little small for the application, but we're going to roll with it. Here we have a 3DFX uh, video card. We have just a regular 10100 Ethernet card here. This one's made by Realtek. One of the few early parts I got for this machine and been with it. This is a Diamond Monster Sound card. This one's based on the Aureal Vortex 2 chipset, I believe. And then we have a Studio PC TV tuner. All right. You can see there's one bulging oops, focus. There's one bulging cap right here. And I'm going to have the captain fix that. But the good news is this thing at least boots up. Alright, you'll notice here there's still a three and a half IDE hard disk, however, we're not going to be using that at all. That's largely just here because I've haven't bothered to rip it out. Okay. Instead, for storage, we're gonna be using this GoTech floppy emulator. It takes an, a USB stick here and you toggle these LEDs to indicate what number you're on with these two switches. And then, if I could push in it, we use a SD card for storage. That will emulate a 32 gig IDE hard disk. I'm not really worried about the right cycles on this. As soon as I get it to the configuration that I want, I'm going to make an image and just deal with it. <laughs> storing a 32 gig flash image or, yeah, storing a 32 gig image is no big deal when you're storing tons and tons of video. You'll notice that there's a couple of badges on here. At one time this thing ran free BSD. At one time it had a Athlon X264 CPU. And a Windows 98 badge salvaged from something else. And I think we're probably going to go back to either Windows 98 or Windows 2000. We'll see where I go with this. Alright, here is the sound card. This is the Aureal Vortex 2. This is a Diamond Multimedia Monster Sound. It emulates a Sound Blaster Pro, although the emulation does come with some trade-offs. More on that later. Alright, here is the 3DFX Voodoo, sorry, Voodoo 3. 2000 video card. You'll see it has notches here in this position. I believe that's supposed to indicate this will only fit the older type of, of AGP socket. And you'll note when I zoom in right here that this slot can take either type. Alright, this is the Pinnacle Studio PC TV card. There was a USB version of this product, I believe. This is the PCI version. 
it requires this cable here to be connected to your sound card's line input instead of the microphone port. Although I believe you could switch it in software. You'll see the coax connector is a little weathered. If I misspoke earlier, this is actually a Linksys 10100 network adapter. Not a Realtek, but same difference. This will provide us with 10100 Ethernet, which was more than sufficient when this thing was new. This is my current storage solution for classic computers, particularly those that utilize IDE or even SCSI. Typically, they're going to come in a package similar to this one or this one. This one takes uh, TF cards or micro SD. These ones only take the, these size uh, SD cards here. And then I have 3D printed some adapters of the bay. I don't make these myself. I had somebody on eBay print those out and then send to me. Then, alternatively, there's this style which take up a slot over there. That might be more helpful depending upon your situation. I personally prefer to go through the front, much like having USB in the front. This is another option that's open to you as well. You can use a combination card such as this. This is a VIA VT6421A card. This one will provide you with two SATA ports, one IDE. You may need to flash the BIOS, depending upon your application. If you're using Windows 95, look for a link in the description for a driver that, and potentially a BIOS for this. I have not tried it personally myself as I have been using new, either Windows 98 or newer with this. As far as an SSD goes, you can use something like this, although your results may vary. I would probably try with a cheap 120 gig first. Okay, right here my thumb is pointing at one of the few modern things on this machine. This is a modern EVGA 700B. And this is an 80 plus bronze power supply. Not exactly the greatest, but that'll do for this computer. Yeah, Alright, as far as optical media goes, I believe this CDR came out of some e-ways, potentially a HP based machine, so I don't know what its capabilities are other than it can read and write CDs. But I do know that this is a 24 speed TIAC CD-ROM drive and I found it to be most reliable when I've gone through many 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 optical drives from Fry's. Unfortunately a $20 drive just doesn't last and neither did they. Oh well. Heck, even the original decal for the second motherboard, the Pentium 3 it had before, had little diagnostic lights. And this would tell you what each of them meant. Unfortunately, mine would fail right here at this. That early chipset initialization. That's how I knew the motherboard was more or less toast. One last shot of the inside. Unfortunately, I'm not really going to do much about this cabling mess for the time being. It's too bad this wasn't a modular power supply. But then again, I think most of the heat problems are going to be right here. When I get my equipment back from the captain, we'll go ahead and proceed with installing an operating system on this. Most likely it be Windows 98. Although I may lean towards Windows 2000 or even XP just for the fun of it. Who knows? Catch you next time.